Frank Gaffney, the founder, president, and CEO of the Center for Security Policy, online at centerforsecuritypolicy.org. Specifically, we're talking about DACA, the Dreamers, or Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Uh, Frank Gaffney, I know that you've been uh, thinking a great deal about this issue. Uh, is there a case for saying, since they came into the country through no fault of their own, we let bygones be bygones? There is a good case. Um, clearly, the uh, political class, and I think a lot of Americans are, are sympathetic to uh, people who have incessantly been described as kids uh, who were brought here, um, again, as you say, um, innocently uh, through uh, no decision, let alone fault of their own. The trouble, Jim, arises when it turns out that a fair number of them aren't kids, uh, certainly aren't children. Um, Some of them are gang members. Some of them have... uh, uh you know not the uh, uh the work ethic or the intelligence that uh, has been imputed to many of them as hard working students you know the american dream um and so it, when you get down to um the particulars it matters uh then there's the second part of this which is um will people who are actually responsible for violating the law the, namely their parents in most cases, who brought them here illegally, um, also uh, deserving of the kind of sympathy that uh, is being given to the, the, the so-called DACA kids. Um, I think most of us um, don't think so. And yet uh, for uh, some who are championing uh, the DACA's uh, uh, cause on, on humanitarian grounds are uh, are insisting that uh, their family members, even extended family members, not just the parents who violated the law, uh, but um, aunts and uncles and uh, you know nephews and cousins and so on, are uh, are also supposed to be eligible for an amnesty. And I think that's where an awful lot of us are going to say, no, sorry. Yeah, the chain migration. I want to certainly come back to that. Uh, I would like to go back to a point that you made, which I don't think can be overemphasized, because it's hard not to empathize with all of these uh, shiny-faced, dewy-eyed class valedictorians just waiting for the chance to pick up their Nobel Prize in medicine for curing cancer. And I, I don't demean such people. They do exist, and I'm sure that there are some in the ranks of the dreamers. But as you noted, there are also some uh, uh, much older gangbangers in this group. And uh, what I'm asking, I I guess here would be what kind of vetting process allowed those two groups to be jammed into the same category? I don't think there was a vetting process. I think it just simply, uh, for the purposes of uh, President Obama's uh, uh, anti-constitutional activity, not just unconstitutional, anti-constitutional decision to um, give these folks uh, uh, legal status on his own authority. Having said, as you know, and I'm sure you've reported on this a lot, Jim, over the years. Having said, he couldn't do it. That that it was not he was not a king. Remember that uh, under the Constitution of the United States, he did not have the authority to do it. And then he decided he did, and he proceeded without, uh, as far as I know, any evaluation at all uh, as to uh, the merits of uh, these kids' cases, uh, uh, their character, um, their educational level, um, whether they were in school, uh, whether they had a prospect of contributing to the society other than through criminal activity, (laughs) which is not much of a contribution. Um, And as a result, uh, you have this uh, sort of uh, assortment of people, some who um, I think we all would want to um, try to accommodate, and uh, a considerable number we shouldn't. And there is, at this point, at least in the the mantra of uh, their Democratic champions, no distinction being made, uh, or again, as I say, uh, any willingness, as far as I can tell, to exclude the people who were absolutely um, guilty of violating our laws to bring these. Uh, so-called kids in. Yeah, one eight six six five zero Jimbo is our number. One eight six six five zero five four six two six with Frank Gaffney of the Center for Security Policy, their founder and president. And uh, we have a call from Kim in Kalispell, Montana. Good evening, Kim. Hi, gentlemen. Hey, I'm a granddaughter of 
people fresh off the boat in 1910 from Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. My grandfather became a citizen. My grandma did not. However, they raised six children. Four of the boys went to World War II. I grew up in Southern California next to a real wetback who did swim a river. He was the best neighbor we ever had, a Mexican man. Um, and having come from Southern California and refugee to Montana, I'm tired of um, demonizing the DACA kids. They're in school. They're driving illegally. They're doing all these things, but they're doing well. So in terms, sir, of the gangs and everything, they exist in Montana. We've got drug gangs up here, and they're white Americans. That is certainly so, true, but that doesn't alter the yeah. fact that uh, these people are here uh, through a violation of the law and, and a fact that I think maybe needs to be repeated here, Kim, because it seems to be in dispute, but it isn't. And that is that no one has the right to enter anybody else's country. Now, you may argue that it should be. I would argue not, but at least that would be debatable. But that such a right is out there, uh, I've seen picket signs indicating that's true. No, there is no right to immigration, so we might start with that. And we have already acknowledged that there are some fine dreamers among the DACA kids. Uh, Frank? Well, yeah, I, I just would go back to what we said a moment ago, uh, Jim, and that is that uh, there are unquestionably people that you've characterized, ma'am, um, and they're among this group that uh, are being considered for a preferential status uh, over all of the people who have applied legally uh, to come to this country. Um, that don't qualify uh, as as students um, or as uh, people who they may well be driving illegally, but but people who um, are not otherwise um, beyond reproach. And I think we just have to be honest about that and try to make an informed uh, decision about uh, the ones that should uh, be allowed to stay and those that we really don't want in America. And uh, thank you for your call, Kim. I would just add this. Uh, I'm sure that all of the anecdotal information you provided is quite accurate. Let's assume that somebody breaks into your house, all right, and in the process of breaking into the house, uh, they're in the kitchen, they're looking for the room with all the valuables, and they notice that uh, that the toaster has uh, started a fire, and they uh, put out the fire on the curtain before it can spread. Then they look out into the backyard where you have a pool, and they see that a child of yours is drowning, and they run out and they save the child. Wonderful. They are all... Uh, I'm sure very grateful that, that, that uh, in fact, help was rendered, but it does not alter one basic fact. The person broke into the house, and we do not just automatically dismiss violations of the law, at least not in a civilized society. I just think we should keep that in mind. One eight six six five zero Jimbo, our number, and uh, yes, Frank, go ahead. Well, it was just the, the further point in your analogy is uh, you don't invite them to stay in the house. Probably. No. I mean, that's that's sort of the parallel here, uh, yeah. is that they get a permanent residency in your uh, domicile. Now, the thing that, that bothers me, I think, the most here, and I really honestly do sympathize, uh, the, the caller from uh, Kalispell, Kim, I think, would uh, would, ha would agree with me on the notion, I, I do sympathize with people, and they are genuinely here through no fault of their own, but their presence here minus enforcement of the law, serves as an incentive for others to try and break our immigration laws. They look at those people, and what happens to those people will determine whether others will try to get somebody across the border and uh, under some kind of preferred status. As long as we do not have control of that border, and by that I mean effective controls, not perfect, there's no requirement for perfect control, but as long as we do not have effective control of our border, then that serves as an incentive, which is ironic because of the, the, the president's insistence on a wall as a prerequisite for treatment of the dreamers, or at least the, the agreement to build such a wall. If you had a wall... In, in my view, that argument that it's an incentive for law-breaking would largely, if not completely, disappear. Right, but uh, the argument actually isn't that we want to stop these folks. Uh, we want to stop this magnet from bringing more of them here. Uh, the, the, the proponents of this effort, uh, let's be honest, 
uh, aren't, I believe, first and foremost moved by humanitarian considerations. Uh, the, the sort of veil was parted when uh, the Center for American Progress, a George Soros um, incubator for some of the most insidious of the left's um, agenda, uh, came forward uh, not too long ago with a memo that made it perfectly clear these uh, open border and uh, and DACA proponents and uh, more importantly uh, champions of illegal immigration are motivated at least in part by the need to uh, change the electorate of the United States to their advantage uh, to ensure that Democratic voters uh, gain and, and retain permanently a majority. And that, I think, has to be a factor in this as well when we're considering whether to turn a blind eye to illegal activity or not. Precisely. You're exactly uh, talking about just, in fact, what the motive is. And I see no need uh, to go about uh, trying to change the composition of this country at the expense of the law. Thank you. Just the same. Something else for us to talk about when we come back in just a moment. Uh, but in the interim, uh, part of the deal was that there was agreement that uh, something about uh, DACA, the uh, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, will come up in a separate bill by next month. Frank Gaffney from the Center for Security Policy is our guest, and uh, Zim calls in from Columbia Falls, Montana. Hello, Zim. Yeah, howdy, uh, Jim, Jim and your guest. A uh, little different take than uh, Kim. Um, here in the Flathead Valley of Montana, yes, we do have little punks that uh, think that they're gangbangers, and unfortunately, yes, we do have a heroin meth problem. But, <clears throat> excuse me, being a uh, police officer in Southern Cal for over five years back in the 80s, the city was... Uh, the signs said uh, population was 300,000. We figured that there was approximately 100,000 of illegals, and we're talking uh, Mexican uh, especially in, in the early to mid-80s, and almost 70% of our call load was due to the illegals and uh you know, go figure the funding. So 33% like of the population caused 70% of your police calls. Correct, and they were not uh, so-called officially there. You no. know what I mean? I mean, like sure. I say, the population signs, you come into town, I won't say where it was at, but it's north of Irvine and south of Garbage Grove. Yeah. In, Although uh, when it came County. time to, to d decide the congressional representation, Zim, I can guarantee you they were there then. Yes, oh, indeed. Yes. Yes, it, it was uh, it, pretty pretty incredible, and that's before all this DACA crap and all that stuff was even uh, part of the situation. But uh, um, right. yeah, it, it's but okay. Well, let's Have let a good one, guys. Respond to you there, uh, Zim. But, but, but ahead, something Frank, that. Abney. Yeah, something that was there in roughly that period, as I recall, was uh, the decision uh, that President Reagan was induced to take. I, I had the privilege of working for him, not on this uh, portfolio, but uh, I know he, he deeply regretted it afterwards, but he was uh, persuaded that he should give an amnesty to uh, the several millions of people who were um, said to be there illegally at the time in Southern California and a lot of other places. And uh, lo and behold, it turned out that there was a lot more, and a lot more came over that open border. And I, I think one other thing I, I would just say, I, I know you've been out of Southern California for a while, but uh, another factor, of course, that is at work here that is also reinforcing uh, powerfully this magnet effect is uh, that you not only have uh, individual communities and cities, but the entire state of California uh, self-declaring as a uh, sanctuary, you know, zone for people who come illegally. And so I, I can only imagine what your successors yeah. in the law enforcement business are facing um, in trying to deal with the threats that you've experienced Indeed. then and I've worse now. I've had uh, relatives uh, serving a lifetime in uh, the Border Patrol, uh, an uncle who's since passed away, and uh, his son, my cousin, who is uh, is still serving. And, uh, yeah, they can uh, tell you some st stories that would uh, curl your hair and, and quite frankly, uh, discourage you. Uh, thank you, Zim, for your service to our community and our country. And here's Elliot in uh, Bozeman, Montana. Good evening, Elliot. Uh, good evening, Jim. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, I just... 
I guess I, I agree with you, your previous caller here that I don't believe that uh, necessarily amnesty is the correct answer. I don't think that our elected servants have the right to give away our children's places in society to somebody who is here illegally. And, you know, I'm sorry that they lied to these kids, but I'm not the one that lied and you're not the one that lied. And neither are our children. And I don't think it's their right to give away what we work hard for to somebody who just broke in. All right. Uh, what about that, Frank? Yeah, fairness doesn't seem to really operate here. Uh, the the proponents of this uh, DACA amnesty, and, and usually that's just a, a subset of their agenda, um, seem to have a single-minded focus on and what is fair for um, people who have come here illegally, uh, whether they were brought here under somebody else's power or their own. Uh, and it, it is, I, I think, one of the things that uh, a study out of Harvard University, which came along uh, nicely timed in the midst of this uh, uh, thrash on Capitol Hill, uh, indicates that, uh, you know, very substantial majorities of Americans don't think that's the definition of fairness, don't think this is a reasonable public policy approach, and uh, therefore, I think are much more closely aligned with President Trump's views on this subject, what he ran on, um, what he put into his national security strategy, what I think he believes in his heart of hearts needs to be done. And uh, I, I'm hoping, you know, uh, just to cut to the chase on this, Jim, that um, we're going to watch the uh, the Democrats tearing into each other for the next uh, couple of weeks over, you know, how outrageous they will be on behalf of illegal aliens. Uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, you've got a bunch of Democrats who who folded on uh, Chuck Schumer because they're running for re-election in red states that Donald Trump carried, um, and they recognize that this is this is possibly fatal to their re-election chances. So it'll be very interesting to watch. I just hope the Republicans don't collapse in the meantime. Yeah. They need to stay the course. Yeah. Well, it's not like the, 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 these are real laws, these immigration laws. It's not like they're laws against murder and rape and robbery. And, of course, what I just said is utter... Nonsense, but it is the view of a lot of people. Yeah, well, it's the law, but it's you know it's not like it's really important. And uh, I wish you would address those people because that is a viewpoint that is prevalent in this country. Yeah, look, one of the things that makes it important, Jim, as you understand, and your your uncle certainly would have, is uh, this is a national security, a homeland security, national security um, sort of. A portfolio that is being affected by the decision that is made more or less explicitly to ignore the law uh, by by either the the people who are violating it or the people who are supposed to be enforcing it. Um, when you have people coming here illegally, it's not just people looking for a, a, a better life for their children or uh, economic opportunities. Uh, it is, of course, the case that among them are gangbangers, as we've been discussing, but there's also jihadists, terrorists, um, human traffickers, uh, drug purveyors, and, and the like. And what they constitute, particularly taken together, is actually a threat to uh, the public safety and, uh, and to our society. Better. And the laws were adopted to try to protect us against such threats. They have to be enforced. To, to Lynn in Marcy, New York. Good evening. I'm very happy to hear Frank and his comments. And one thing I was thinking to clear up some of the thinking of public, the public opinion is why don't we hear more statistics about these children and how many have been educated and how many are, you know, gangbangers and, and so forth. let let the public know what these people really are. Because the, the truth in such statistics, uh, Lynn, would, would uh, harm the agenda of, uh, of many of those who would prefer to sweep those, those statistics under the rug, Frank? Well, exactly, but let's yeah. get that information out there. Yeah. And second thought I've had is these people that have been educated, why can't this be considered as a wonderful foreign student exchange program and let these kids go back to their own countries and improve things in their own countries? All right, Frank? 
Well, th- taking that second point first, I-, I think this is such an important insight. Uh, now, the, the, the insistence that we hear from uh, the DACA so-called kids and, and their defenders is, well, they don't have another country. Uh, well, they do actually have another country. It is the country of their their parents. Um, but it would be incalculably helpful to those countries if these kids are all that they're cracked up to be, um, to have them back uh, as people willing to try to help their home societies, their their uh, uh, countries of origin, shall we say, um, to be better places. But again, that's not uh, part of the the narrative, and as to the question about the statistics, um, I, I, you know, the, I think this is a very fuzzy business. I've heard the numbers, everything from six hundred seventy thousand to eight hundred thousand of these so-called DACA kids that are affected by uh, President Trump's um, uh, decision to reverse. Uh, Barack Obama's unconstitutional action. Um, I've heard numbers from uh, 3,000, uh, excuse me, 3 million uh, plus to uh, substantially larger numbers who are their extended family members. Um, we've heard uh, numbers as low as 500 of them who are in the military. Um, I've been told that something on the order of maybe 30% of them are actually in school or, or even literate. I mean, it, so the statistics, I think Jim's right, do not support the case of those who are trying to argue we've got to, you know, uh, ensure that all of these people are entitled to the full um, ride on the American dream. Uh, but I don't know that the numbers are all that uh, rigorously uh, understood by even the champions of them. All right. Back with more in a moment. Welcome back to the Jimbo Hannon Show at one eight six six five zero Jimbo. Frank Gaffney of the Center for Security Policy at centerforsecuritypolicy.org is our guest. We're talking about dreamers and uh, talking with Sharon in Crane, Missouri. Hello, Sharon. Hello, Jim. I'd like to make some points. Uh, the individuals that we are talking about do have rights of citizenship in their countries of origin. They do not have the right of citizenship here, yet they are given all of the benefits that citizens here have to work very hard for. Now, if they are going to give these individuals legal status, number one, they should never, ever be allowed to vote in any election from city to federal, ever. Also, if they cannot speak English, they need to be sent back immediately. If they are of school age and are not in school, they need to be sent back. I am sorry. I may sound very cruel, but this is the basic facts. The drain on our country, because these individuals are given Great privileges, privileges that we would not have if we went to their country and tried to enter illegally. Oh, uh, we certainly would not. And there, and there are thousands of people who are waiting in line to come to this country legally, and they are spending a lot of time, a lot of money, trying to do things the right way, the legal way, mm-hmm. And we are spitting in their faces. All right. Let's let our guests respond to that. Go ahead, Frank. Well, I think there's a lot to what you say. Uh, This uh, question, again, as you said, Jim, I think very importantly, it, it isn't a matter of right. I mean, even if somebody brought you here illegally and you had no say in it, you still don't have a right to be in this country, let alone um, the right to the full benefits of citizenship, including the right to determine who is going to govern in our country. Um, this point was was pretty powerfully made earlier today when you saw uh, numbers of these kids uh, shutting down Disneyland, uh, demanding the right to become citizens. Uh, I, I personally think that 
we have to get back to the principle that we want people to come here right. on the merits of what they can do yes. for our country and not on the basis that uh, by some accident or some law breaking of somebody else's perhaps uh, doing they are entitled to Indeed. it. Let's take a call from Steve in central Mexico. Hello Steve. Hello, my goodness, it's a privilege to be on your show. I'm a long-time listener and uh, I just want to say I I totally agree with your topic. I do not believe in the legalization of the dreamers. Uh, the other side of the story, down here in Mexico, we have literally millions of homes where the father has gone to the States and he forgets he has a family down here, and those kids down here end up becoming many times gang members or or other things. And I just think uh, legalization of, of illegality is just not who America is. All right, Frank? Concur. All right. More to come. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to the Jimbo Hannon Show. Frank Gaffney from the Center for Security Policy is our guest. We're talking about Dreamers with Greg in Sebring, Florida. Hello, Greg. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Fine. Um, you. Frank, uh, I, I really enjoy what you've had to say on here this evening. Um, I want to throw my two cents worth on this. I have a Filipino fiancé who's still in the Philippines, and we're in the process of, of bringing her and her son here to the States. And we have to go through the process of a K-1 visa. Um, she has to go through the process of being interviewed at the at the embassy there in Manila. Um, it's costly. Um, it's worth it. I've known her for three years, so it's not like it's something I just did yesterday. But the point is, she, she has a degree in uh, pharmaceutical, so she has something to give when she comes here. And the the point is that these dreamers, uh, I believe you had a woman named Sharon, I think it was on a few minutes ago, who made an excellent point. You know what? I say if, if you're going to let them stay, give them a green card. They cannot vote ever. Um, if they want to participate in our society, that would be fine. But if not, send them back. Their parents cannot stay. Their grandparents cannot stay. Um and that's, that's just the way of life. I'm sorry. And you brought up, Frank, you brought up an excellent point. Let them go back home and give to the society that they came from. All right, uh, Frank, yeah. your response? Uh, well, I think that was actually Jim's point. I was just seconding it. But, look, it, you, you're, you're lending a degree of um, specificity to a point that I think we started with, and that is we have a legal system whereby people are able to come to this country uh, if they measure up, if they are properly vetted and are, uh, you know, conforming with all of our legal requirements. It is, talk about fairness, it is not fair to them uh, or to their, you know, prospective uh, husbands in this country or or others uh, who are trying to help them become part of the American dream uh, to uh, to allow people to jump the line. Yeah. And, and it, for the record, uh, by the way, it, we've, we've done programs on how difficult and time-consuming it is to come in legally, yeah. uh, so we, uh, we are aware of that. Thank you, uh, Greg, to uh, Gary in North Texas. Hello, Gary. Good evening, sir. I've been a soldier on the border. I've been a federal ranger on the frontier and an armed, mounted border scout. Three quick ones. Get pregnant, about to deliver, get on a plane for the states, equals one <clears throat> illegal, one citizen. Number two, too many of these dreamers were actually brought in here <clears throat> with a black eagle on their arm, tattooed, denoting I have killed at least one person by the time I was eight years old, unquote. Number three, election. How can you say Trump lost the vote when five to eight million illegals voted? Thank you, gentlemen. All right, I appreciate your thoughts there. Uh, uh, as regards the notion of chain migration, we haven't talked about that, but that caller alluded to it with the the women eight point nine months pregnant who who borders to drop over and uh, uh, and drop a citizen. Uh, your thoughts about chain migration? We've got about uh, thirty seconds here, Frank. Yeah, they've, they've been called anchor babies. Um, those kids uh, who are born here 
um, become not just uh, a, an opportunity for that mother to stay, but of course, uh, with uh, relations to a citizen of the United States, large numbers besides. That chain migration is a real phenomenon and it needs to stop. We will not uh, certainly uh, have heard the last of this, I can assure you. We'll talk some more as uh, time approaches in the future, but uh, we wanted to get a, a good conversation with Frank Gaffney tonight. Again, the website, org.